Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with my fifth gameplay review. We'll be taking a look at a game of Regicide on the map Scythe, submitted by Bayakugan67. It runs about six minutes long, and off the spawn here, I just want to point out a few things. Sniper does spawn uh, top middle, and we have a teleporter that takes you from here um, all the way over to uh, here. On the map. Thankfully, uh, this gameplay didn't have very many people using the jetpack. You can jetpack up on top of this area for a 10 second soft kill zone, which is very unfair on this map. As it is, I don't personally think this map should be in Regicide because it is one of the most brutal maps for Regicide. But this gameplay happens to be a little bit more slow and gives some really, really good tips and tricks specifically towards um, controller sensitivity. If you're unaware of what I'm talking about, I'm talking about look sensitivity. As you can see, I have mine on 4 and my button layout set to bumper jumper, as is also clearly stated in the description of this video. Now, off the start here by Coogan, I'll be addressing you directly, and so let's just go walk through your gameplay here. Off the start here, your goal should be to generally go towards the sniper area. And what you start off by doing is being really, really unsure of what to do. You're sort of just looking for who's going to become the king first. What you needed to do is go probably through this teleporter and attack people or jump down, drop onto this rock, and get a more hype advantage. You don't really want to be over in this area of the map simply because people can jump through the teleporter at you and uh, people up here have a high vantage point position. In other words, this place doesn't have a whole lot of angles on people. This is a place for you to safely spawn and then move out of. Uh, similar to um, this back area right here, and um, this back area right here. You really want to be moving away from those positions once you have them. And you do, but you end up sort of dropping down bottom mid here. Um, you do get a pretty good nade, um, but this guy ends up absolutely destroying you. And you definitely had that kill, not only because of the pretty good nade you throw, but you definitely had that kill. And this is something I want to I want to point out to you throughout the film. Um, please don't um, make this thing that I'm harping on you in any certain way, but the bottom line here is that you are playing on too high of a sensitivity, and I'll point that out throughout the game and give you a few tips and tricks on that. So right here, you are going for the king, moving top middle, that's a good move. Um, you see the king, you end up firing at him, and it's really important that you get this kill. However, you turn and throw literally the perfect nade at this guy coming through the window, pre-nading him as he comes through. That was really a phenomenal play. I don't see you make this sort of very, very clutch decision making throughout the film. In fact, a guy comes through you through this exact same doorway later on in the film, and you throw the worst grenade ever, completely different from the way you just threw that nade, and the guy's coming through the exact same doorway, and you completely miss him. But anyway, now you should be going for the king with all your might. You see that the king died. You got the king assist, If those, for those of you who don't know. When you assist a kill on the king, you do get five actual points towards your score on the bottom right-hand corner. That's why um, he has 35 score right now. Now, um, by a Coogan, uh, you do need to push through and try to kill this king. You do retain full shields here. I do like how you sort of wait around for this guy to drop down and kill him. But unfortunately, this guy comes up behind you. And this is one of the reasons why I, asked, I said you needed to push out, because this guy... That's always going to happen when you're bottom middle, and especially in Regicide when the king is located towards the bottom center of the map like he was, you're going to get flanked. Good shots on the boss, uh, but um, really bad grenade there, and boss comes out and just completely cleans you up. And I want you to watch this very, very closely. As you clean up boss here, um, you throw a bad grenade, you realize he spawned behind you. I want you to watch how many shots you miss here. One, two, you miss three, and yeah. So out of four shots you fired, you missed three of them, okay? You are playing on too high a sensitivity. Let me pause here and give you a few tips. Most pro professional MLG players play between three and five sensitivity, typically. There are a few dramatic examples of this not being the case. For example, MLG pro player Nated is an example of playing on very high sensitivities and getting away with it. Mikwin um, also plays on a pretty high sensitivity but you should pull your sensitivity back from something higher than 5. Um, it is really, really bad to play on a really high sensitivity in game modes that require you to be super, super accurate. In Team Snipers, you can get away with kind of playing on a high sensitivity, and in SWAT, you can kind of get away with it as well, 
but because you have shields and you're working with headshots versus shield shots, basically on any enemy body player getting them weak, you cannot be playing on a really high sensitivity. Um, basically, what you're saying is that I'm going to sacrifice my hardcore aiming skills for being able to react to people quickly who are behind me. And on this map, that would be the case, but what you have to realize is that your aiming skills are always should be prioritized over your reaction time for people really close to you. Um, in Halo 4 especially, because the weapons are so completely darn accurate, you can get very, very clutch long-range shots and win clutch long-range duels, where, which are much more important than winning close-range battles. If you die every once in a while to a close-range battle just because you're using a low sensitivity and can't turn fast enough, that's a much more okay than consistently losing mid to long range BR battles as you do consistently in this film. Moving on, you do jump up to this rock. I like how you use that there. Um, and then this is yet another example of completely missing shots on a guy who was one shot. You do end up throwing a long range nade um, very well and getting the Hail Mary and then jumping through the teleporter, which is a good idea. I would have liked to see you turn towards the king here um, and try to finish him instead of that player, but um, once again here, you just fire multiple shots that I, I just, I'm not sure what you're doing. Um, you miss four, five, six, you hit seven, eight misses, ninth, and yeah, you miss basically the complete majority of your shots here. And you seem probably, you paused there, probably a little surprised that you died. Um, you need to be using a lower sensitivity. I would recommend pulling down to five or possibly four. Um, another thing I want to point out to you, and this is very brief, don't necessarily just aim from left to right. You need to be moving from left to right, back and forth onto their body, and then aiming slowly, aiming upwards towards their head, and when they lose their shield, hit their head with that four shot. Okay? The battle rifle can take out three fully shielded opponents with one clip. Don't believe me? Go into a custom game and try it out for yourself. If you're wasting all of your clip on one person, that means you're being brutally inaccurate which is what happens in this film a lot. <clears throat> Once again, you're missing the majority of your shots and you give up this very easy kill to another enemy player. Um, you definitely should have had that guy. And um, I can promise you that you would have won this game if you, like, if you would have gotten some of these kills. You luckily end up um, trading with that guy. Um, again, using this rock, a very good idea when you get that spawn, using this rock to jump up. Right here, I personally um, would jump into the teleporter because you are kind of weak. And um, here's the reason why. This guy, people are going to be converging on your location. You are already um, weak. If you can get behind a few people, okay, if you can get behind a few people and sort of catch them off guard when you come to the teleporter, you can get the headshot on somebody. Now, you do make an okay position charging forward, but do you see what I mean? by the fact that this guy died and the king died before you were able, even able to get here. This is what I'm talking about. And again, that you may say, oh, this is a situational Genesis writer. You already watched the film multiple times. You know this is going to happen. Actually, I would have gone through the, the, that uh, teleporter right there regardless. Um, when I first watched the film, I knew I was going to say that to you. Because on Scythe, the map is so brutally close quarters, and this king is hanging out in this location which can easily be shot at, okay? He's going to die far before you can ever make it there, all right? <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting where the king spawned. Um, you may have been able to actually be closer to the king by going to the teleport there. This guy does an excellent free nade on you and gangs the king ship. Um, really want to be going after that player. I would definitely recommend shooting him right now across map. Unfortunately, he ends up shooting you across map. You get a crazy double kill with a, um, a grenade um, and this guy comes right up and cleans you up. I would have waited there um, and sort of baited him around the central pillar here. There's no need to rush out which I see you doing a lot. You probably want to be using uh, shielding and dexterity. Um, you want to be uh, using dexterity I would imagine um, because you end up needing to reload a lot because of your inaccuracy. Get the nice double kill there. Uh, moving on to the commentary, um, you need to go for the king um, pretty much now, and um, you do get kind of tunnel visioned, like on that player, you need to be looking where the king is at all times. Um, he has a 20 point 
uh, bonus on his head, or not bonus, but 20, you get 20 points. That's basically two kills in one. And you really need to be going for him. Um, this is just really lucky. That's actually one of your few good VRs. And here is the exact example I was mentioning of you um, seeing the guy on your radar turning around and for whatever reason completely forgetting the previous kill you got and throwing it at this wall. What that's assuming is that this player is going to charge out and then run along this wall at you. This guy doesn't have to do that because you're already weak. And this grenade basically does almost nothing to him. Um, or basically nothing. Uh, I would definitely would have reconsidered that. Um, I'm not sure if you could have gotten that kill, but I think if you had gone to the king a little bit more, um, you would have been good there. Now, I would like to point out here that this also, the mistake you just made here, comes from being tunnel vision. When you push up here, you must guarantee that no one is down in this area. And you basically have to get behind this wall so that people can't shoot you from over here as fast as possible. So once you're over here, you're pretty much golden. But you have to be watching this place and this place. So after you threw that grenade, you knew that guy was going to back down, so you could have checked over here. But instead, you sort of got tunnel vision with his position, and you weren't able to stay alive on this ramp. That's the guy kind of off guard there. You do respawn and get a good kill. Now, it is my intention, or what I would do, is I would charge through the teleporter here. Once again, the king has died before you're even able to get him. And you need to go through the teleporter, and you could have caught that guy who was just off the floor there, who we just saw that down there. You could have caught him off guard. Unfortunately, you're now in a very precarious position, top middle, and again, this is just one of those things. You could have killed this guy that you just shot at with one shot, okay? You were, there's no need to fire three or four shots at him. Cal you know, calm yourself down, take a deep breath, aim for that head, and move into his head. Just go, boom, and shoot him in the head. You don't need to go... Doom, 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 shooting all around. You just need to line up with his head, move over, and pull the trigger as you're moving over, making that three bullet spread. One of those bullets hit his head. That's all you need. One bullet to hit a person's head when they have no shield. You do end up backing down here, going bottom middle. You need to get out of here as soon as possible. At this point, it really kind of aggravates me because what you basically should have done is you should have run out here behind this pillar, looked over here, paused for like half a second, to make sure that this guy got concerned with this guy, these people above you. And then after that, after you can hurt, hear him shooting behind you, jump up on top of this rock, jump up on here, and start shooting the guy he is shooting at, mainly this person. Unfortunately, you end up like hanging around and then going, oh, okay, I'm going to get this kill. The thing is, you can't pursue this guy from any logical angle unless he comes to you. You want to only pursue kills that you know you're probably going to get. Shooting at this guy is basically an overall waste of time, and you end up going back into this field, getting no shield, and curving around. Now, I do like your flank here um, as you go around through the back, but as you can see, you're not getting kills. You have got to get kills at this point, and this is one of the, another one of the circumstances you need to teleport through here. You're, once you push up to here, okay, this map is small enough that people will spawn behind you over here, and then be pushing up to you. What happens when you teleport is that no one expects you to be there. No one does unless they're really good at playing this map. If you had teleported, you probably would have been able to kill this guy from behind. And again, this map is crucial, crucially dependent upon how many times you teleport and at what point. If you've just spawned in this place and there's no one over here, the likelihood of enemy players being over there is very high. You want to teleport through and get as many kills as possible. Now, I would like to also point out how many shots you miss here. As I slow this down, just watch how many shots you're missing here. Like, you're, you're not even really aiming at this person until the very end, and he's already cleaned you up. The good grenade. Okay? You need to be using a lower sensitivity. And again, I don't mean to pick on you, it's just how it works. Now right here, I would have gone for the teleporter. Once again, you spawn in this area, the king is on the opposite end, you need to teleport across the map as fast as humanly possible. That's why I'm saying this map is so brutal, because if you play it correctly, you teleport to the king repeatedly, you will end up winning the game, regardless of whatever the king can do. Now right here, this guy is crouching here. He has no idea that you're here. You should have thrown a grenade at this wall and bounced it straight into his feet. Unfortunately, 
you end up being absolutely dominated by Voss, someone who you've actually cleaned up a few times before this point, but, um, or I'm sorry, you didn't get absolutely dominated, but you could have gotten that kill because you were weak. You see what I mean? Because you could have definitely gotten that kill. Once again, your sensitivity was a little too high. You just barely missed that. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. This is where you get dominated. That, that's where, yeah, he just basically out the argue because he's playing on a lower sensitivity and is um, basically uh, strafing correctly from left to right a little bit. Even a little bit of strafing from left to right is better than nothing. Now here, um, this guy does end up getting away. You get the king assist though, which is very good. But I'm puzzled at your decision making here. Uh, this guy is over here. Okay, you need to drop down and pursue him immediately. If you come over here, no telling who's going to be over here or over here. But you haven't seen anybody over here. You just got a kill, which means this area is not likely to be spawned in for at least a few seconds. You need to push through this area and try to kill this king as fast as possible. As you can see, there are players over here. There's actually a guy kind of behind you. Um, but again, um, now, uh, okay, yeah, this is a great example of the strategy you can do. You don't fire this first bolt shot charge. You definitely should have fired this full first bolt shot charge. I think you're trying to wait for your shields to regenerate. On, again, on Scythe, that's not going to happen, okay, especially with the teleporter sitting right here and the king right beside you. You're not going to regenerate your shields here, dude. That's, that's not going to happen unless you're just a miracle worker. And some of the players you're facing against are completely mentally retarded. So what you should do here, okay, is drop down and immediately try to bolt shot him. Regardless of whether you get the kill or not, you're probably going to get an assist which will like you get you get you five points as, as I stated previously. Unfortunately, you don't realize that this this barrier can be used to block headshots. Even though you have no shields, you can use this barrier to block headshots as you drop. If you drop and you're halfway through dropping, if you fire at him immediately when your your reticle is fully domed on him right here, he can't see your head right here. Okay? That's something that a lot of players don't know. But he can't see your head when you're, like, right here, right? And that's really nice. So you definitely could have bolt shot at him, especially when he came out a little bit right there. You definitely should have dropped down a bolt shot at him. Unfortunately, he ends up cleaning you up, and you're not close enough there. You needed to get way, like, you needed to be way more aggressive there and get closer. As it is, the king, the king is only 20 points away from winning, which is very important that you understand that. You need to be going for the king. And here's the reason why. The king is the person in the lead, okay? He's the person who will be winning the game in two kills, okay? And it is important that you kill him not only for his score, but also to prevent him from getting kills to win the game prematurely. It's a double-edged sword, which is a kind of interesting feature of Regicide, is that the king becomes a very high priority party in the end of the game. So this guy gains the kingship and you do kill him, which is very lucky, I feel like. Um, but you end up not going for the king. The king is over here on the opposite side of the map. You need to get over there as fast as possible make sure he doesn't get this final kill. And you do end up going through the teleporter, but he's already won the game by this point. So overall, um, I would overall say that um, basically you need to lower your sensitivity and you need to use the teleporters more. They need to focus on strafing from left to right while BR dueling. It only takes four shots to kill someone. Most of the time, you're going to take five shots. Don't get me wrong. You know what? Nobody's perfect. But you'll see that four shot popping up more often. And trust me, you'll know when you get a four shot. It's way, it feels like a half second to a second faster than any other, you know, five shot or any other weapon. It's very satisfying to pull off. Um, but once you get get that down you will be winning a lot more free-for-all duels being more aggressive on the king and teleporting through the sides of the map so everyone i hope you enjoyed this video um thank you very much for by coogan 67 for submitting this gameplay if you want to submit your own gameplay click on the annotation in the top right hand corner right now that'll take you to the video where i will describe how you submit your gameplay clips to me i'm looking for close gameplays um, or gameplays where you lose and you want to know why. Um, and that film will tell you how to submit your gameplays. Clips to me. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.